Here's a problem that asks about the energy and speeds of an accelerating proton. The first part of the problem asks us to find its final speed as it accelerates. If the acceleration is constant, then this part of the problem can be solved simply with our old kinematics equations. Since time isn't relevant here, I'll use the v squared one, the one that states that the square of the final speed is equal to the square of the initial speed plus 2 times the acceleration plus the distance that the particle travels through. To make this a formula for the speed, we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. Now we're given the particle's initial speed as 2.5 times 10 to the power of 7 meters per second. The acceleration is given as 3.4 times 10 to the power of 15 meters per second. And the distance that it travels through, delta x, is equal to 3.4 centimeters, or converting to meters, 3.4 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meters. If we plug all of this into a calculator, we will find a final speed of about 2.9 times 10 to the power of 7 meters per second. And that is our answer for the first part of the problem. But the second part of the problem asks for the increase in kinetic energy as it speeds up, which I will write as k final, k sub f, minus k initial, k sub i. The formula for the kinetic energy of an object is 1 half times its mass times the square of its speed. So in this case, we're taking this formula for the final speed and subtracting the formula for the initial speed, which, if we want to do some refactoring, can be written more simply as 1 half m times, in parentheses, vf squared minus vi squared. And now, once again, we just need to do some plugging in here. The mass of a proton is given, and it can also be looked up, as 1.67 times 10 to the power of a negative 27 kilograms. The final speed, vf, is what we just found in the first part of the problem, and v initial is given to us as 2.5 times 10 to the power of 7 meters per second. So if we plug all of this into our calculator, then we find an energy change of about 1.9 times 10 to the power of negative 13 joules. And that is our answer to the second part of the problem. And that is it. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, whether they're conceptual or about the problem solution itself, feel free to post a comment down below and I'll try to help you out. If you have a request for a future thing you'd like me to do a video on, I have a Discord server linked below and I'll try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. That's all for today and I hope you all have a good night. Bye-bye.